Hi, Facebook Live. Hello. Um, back on. Sorry about last week. I was um, in the hospital with my son. He had appendicitis, so he's had his appendix out. So that was an uh, eventful full day last week. But uh, back now. Um, got quite a few questions to go through, which is fantastic. Um, just finished a case in theatre. Started about 10 o'clock this morning. It's now... 10 past 7, so it's quite a big case by all accounts. And I'll tell you what's kept me going. Oh, it's finished. Water. That was water. Um, that's what. That's, just, that's the trick, you know, big case. Don't do many big cases anymore. I used to do a lot when I was in the NHS in the uh, doing my breast reconstructions. But um, don't do big cases that often. But uh, So... Um, a bit of hubbub in the background just while the patient's being recovered. Um, but yeah, we've got some questions going on. Uh, I had some problems the other day with um, seeing comments. I saw one comment, but not another. So um, hopefully that, that won't be a problem. Well, I'll go look at the camera, never mind. Anyway, first question, what make of polyurethane implants do I use? Uh, polyurethane implants, I've only got one make, and that is Polytech, which is a German company, and that's the obviously the make that I use. That's the only um, um, company that make them. There used to be another company called Silimed, which was a Brazilian company, which is why um, polyurethane implants used to be called furry Brazilians, um, because they sort of feel furry. But um, the Brazilian company, uh, they lost their CE mark because of problems with the factory in America. Um, so the Silimed ones they don't make anymore. So there's only one, um, one make of... Um, of polyurethane implants. Um, why do they reduce capsular contracture? Well, they reduce capsular contracture because the um, scar tissue, the, the capsule, all implants get a capsule. If you put an implant in the body, wherever you put it in the body, if you get a shrapnel in your leg or if you implant something in your, in your cheek or anywhere, um, it will get walled off in scar tissue, which is called a capsule. That's normal. All implants have got a capsule. Over time, the capsule contracts, and what happens because an implant is squidgy? Got an implant here for a later question. Because it's squidgy, as it contracts, it makes the implant no longer squidgy and makes it hard and spherical, and uh, that's the problem with capsular contracture. Polyurethane foam implants have got a foam coating, which is a three-dimensional foam, which the the scar tissue grows into the three-dimensional foam, so it doesn't just f form a sheet around the capsule; it forms a it's in lots of different directions. So when the scar tissue contracts, it's contracting in lots of different directions, not as a sheet around the implant. So it doesn't squeeze the implant and make it feel hard. It, um, the, because there's a scar tissue going that way and one going that way, when they contract, it cancels itself out. That makes sense. That's how, caps, that's how polyurethane implants work. And that's why you have textured implants. Um, textured implants are meant to mimic, well, they're not meant to mimic, but they're sort of roughened the surface. And the way they make them, at least one of the company's mentor makes them by imprinting polyurethane onto the wet silicone. So uh, they're trying to, in a way, I suppose, they're trying to mimic um, um, polyurethane foam by making it textured versus smooth implants, because uh, smooth implants um, are said to have a higher rate of capsular contracture than textured implants. Textures are roughened, which breaks up, breaks up the scar tissue a bit. But... Um, polyurethane is the best with regards to capsular contracture but then now smooth implants have come back in because people are talking about ALCL uh, whether there's less of a risk of ALCL with it. Uh, smooth implants now the numbers are very small um, and I think I don't think there's any cases with smooth implants so that's something that might have an effect but, but the numbers are so small it's hard to get any statistical um, significance on that um, conical implants um, Conical implants were very good implants, and I used them a lot, and I loved them, uh, particularly in people who were borderline for a breast lift. They're really, really good uh, because they give a lot of projection to the breast. But you can't use them anymore because they were made by Silimed, which is a company which no longer uh, has got the CE mark. So we can't use poly uh, sorry, we can't use conical implants anymore, which is a real shame. So that's um, that's that. They're out now. So it's only just teardrop and teardrop and round are the only shapes that you can have. <clears throat> but obviously there's different projections. Custom implants. Do I make custom implants? Well, I don't make custom implants. 
um, but the uh, custom implants are um, made and you could have custom implants. Uh, custom implants for people, usually people who want to, well, custom breast implants for people who want to be very big, really. Um, the other sort of custom implants are things like if you've got a pectus excavatum, a, a sort of defect in your sternum, you can get custom made implants for that. But I think, I don't think that's what this question is about. This question is probably about breast implants. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't really go down that route with patients. I think the biggest silicone implants are about 600 odd cc's. They do make them to order going up bigger. But as people want to go up, if you, as you've got to a thousand cc's and bigger, I can't make that look good. Um, so I don't really get into the realms of custom made implants for patients who want to be very, very big, uh, simply because it's not my, um, I, 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 as I say, I can't make it look good. So I would say go to someone who uh, maybe does a bit more of that sort of work. It's not really part of my um, patient group. I don't see many patients who want that. Um, fold implants. I think that what that's saying is, um, yes, how does a fold cause a lump? Because we've got a pa patient who's got a lump in a, in, a, in a breast, has been to the doctors, had a scan, the scan said it's a knuckle of the implant. And what that means is that over time, I've got an implant here to demonstrate, over time, um, this capsular contracture, so that, that's, a, that's a round implant there, capsular contracture sort of uh, contracts around the implant and can form a knuckle. I make, uh, put one hand on the one hand on the phone could could be called for a two-handed job doesn't sound good does it um right demonstrating a knuckle of an implant so quite clearly just demonstrate it as if i if i make the where's the camera can you see that knuckle there? There's a there's a bit sticking out. I've made a knuckle, so that bit sticking out. Let me get the angle of that. Yeah, see it? Maybe you can see it. Maybe you can't. Anyway, if you're in the clinic, I could show it to you. There is a bit of a knuckle. There's a bit. That's a knuckle. That's a lump. And that that might feel like a lump uh, underneath the skin, but it's not. It's just the implant being com being compressed by the capsule contracture. And you feel a knuckle of the implant. Live demonstration there. Didn't expect that, did you? Um, oh, we've got a question coming in live. Um, will you have an example of high profile? I'll try it in about 400 for me to see a difference when I see you tomorrow. <laughs> uh, um, Will I have a high profile, an ultra high profile implants? Well, ultra high is mentor. I don't tend to use it. Leave my phone like that now. Uh, don't tend to use it. Um, thanks for your question, Amy, number one. Amy's asked for those viewers, um, for the rest of the viewers, will I have an example of a high profile and an ultra high profile implant in about 400 to 480 cc for her to see um, the difference when she sees me tomorrow? Um, so I, I use... Uh, Nagor implants, so I'll have I'll have an extra high and a high implant. I don't know if I'll have them that size. There's so many different types of implants. I think they're about 420 or something of the implants I've got, which I guess is 400 to 480. The size and the profile are different, and I wouldn't get too much into. Am I a bit close to the TV now? Uh, I wouldn't get too much into looking for a 400 cc high profile and a 400. Just worry about the profile, separate to the size. Um, the profile is really important. So, if you want ultra high profile implant, oh no, high. Well, you have to decide between high and ultra high. So we we can talk about that, and I can show you a picture of people who've had high and ultra high. Probably not those volumes, but it doesn't matter that they're not those volumes because they'd have fit that patient's width, they'd have fit that patient's chest. So the volume doesn't matter so much. So they give a different look and are high and an ultra high. Um, and then we've got to decide on the 400, 480. That will depend on your base width. So I think the decision won't be that difficult. I don't think you have to see those implants to get an idea of um, which one's right for you. The answer to your question, probably not, but I don't need to in order to hopefully convey what we can do with what, what, you know, what might be right for you. Um, but I do have high and extra high profile implants 
um, and I think I ran that volume. Um, why swelling and numbness goes up and down after the breast reduction? Not only a breast reduction, all, all operations really. I often see people when they have surgery, and immediately after the surgery, they say, oh, I'm really happy with it, it really looks really good, but I'm just worried when the swelling goes down, they're going to all disappear and get a lot smaller. But I always say to people, the swelling goes up and down in the first few months, usually about the first three months for things to start to stabilise, and then it can't take um, many months for it to fully settle, but the first few months, things are very up and down. And what ha the reason for that is that when you first have surgery, you're lying in the hospital bed and you're not doing anything, and you're a bit sore and things like that, and you, you've got your sports you know, post-op bra on, and then... Um, you go home and you start to feel a bit better and you do a bit more. So when you're not doing anything, the swelling goes down. And when you go home, you do a bit more and the swelling goes up. And then as the swelling goes, as you do more, you think, oh, that hurts. I won't do that anymore. So you stop doing it and the swelling goes down again. And so that's why it goes up and down. As you feel better, you do more, swelling goes up. It hurts. You think, oh, I've done too much. The swelling goes down. So that's why the swelling goes up and down the first few months. Just, um, it's normal, so don't worry about it. And sometimes one swells more than the other, and uh, shapes and all sorts of things change in the first few months. So don't make any long-term decisions about the size in the first few months, especially not straight away. Don't think, oh, they're too big or they're too small, because, as I say, it goes up and down. So, um, so I'm swiping. Oh, I'm going to have a free hand. I'm swiping. Um, so I think that's my questions for this um, this one, this broadcast. Uh, thanks, Amy. You're uh, always a good contributor, and I'm very grateful to you, and I will see you tomorrow. Look forward to it, and uh, see what we can do. And um, I'm going to check out and see what on earth they're doing next door to my patient. And um, I will see you here at the same time next week. Uh, I think they're after me. Okay, bye.